Two weeks ago, I did a video on revealing my most profitable investor strategy ever pretty much. I gave you four examples of stocks that I bought and sold here in 2023. And I pretty much told you how I find these stocks, how I personally do it. And it's really an amazing strategy. But at the end of the video, I also shared of why I'm trying to run away from this strategy, mainly from taxes, because I get in and out of stocks a lot. Sometimes I sell stocks in two weeks, sometimes in five or six months and this caused me to pay much more taxes which would decrease my returns but the second reason is just going in and out so every time i sell a stock i have to go find the next one and then after i buy it a dollar for 50 cents once the 50 cents becomes a dollar i have to sell it then i have to go find another dollar for 50 cents or a very high uncertainty situation so i still implement this strategy but my strategy has shifted a little bit over time kind of maybe like warren buffett how he used to buy the cigar butts net net stocks and then he changed shifted more into growing companies like Apple and, and a lot of others. So it's a pretty amazing and I'm going to share it all in this video. I'm going to share how I do everything within my uh, current strategies that I implement. I'm going to share it all in this video. These kind of uh, view videos, they don't get a lot of likes. So all I ask, if you could please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing if you're actually new uh, to the channel. So the strategy that I implement right now is you know most of you are familiar with the concept and it's mainly the barbell content strategy or the barbell concept and the barbell uh, concept is mainly putting most of your money into large investments safe low risk kind of stocks maybe stocks like apple google uh, amazon or maybe one i can actually think of as a pretty boring stock something like autozone which they sell auto parts and then they use the free cash flow to keep buying back stock and you could look at the stock chart it's pretty amazing it's a recession proof business model dollar proof whatever you want to call it it's it, it was up in 2009 financial crisis so this is the kind of stocks that i like if i want to put my money into safe low risk but you know decent returns kind of investment this is where most of my money actually is now on the other hand i also have the small investments which are high risk big payoff situations and in my personal case it's actually the micro cap stocks i've been getting much more into micro cap investing especially now in 2023 this is when i got into it i am not an expert in this uh, industry by any kind of mean i'm not an expert at all but i do have around four stocks in my portfolio micro caps one of them is up 130 percent since february one of them is up 50 percent one of them is flat and one of them has actually been a disaster is down like 23 or 24 percent so this is my uh, recent experience with it i'm not an expert on it but i'm going to share with you my strategy the strategies i've been implementing for me to be able to find these uh, micro cap kind of stocks but it all started pretty much with an amazing book that I recommend most investors to actually read. And this is a book by Thomas Phelps. It's called 100 to 1 in the Stock Market. And it mainly analyzes the stocks that went up a hundred times. And it gives you concepts and the things you should be looking for to find these stocks that could potentially go up a hundred times. This is not a guarantee as that most stocks, they don't go up a hundred times. But in this book, he actually studied all the stocks that went up a hundred times and what do they have in common do they have maybe high revenue growth do they have something special that made them actually go up 100 times and it talks about the mentality of you actually holding them and what are the things you should be looking for for example in the book he actually shares this graph and this is a stock most of you are familiar with it it's Pfizer stock and this is the financials of Pfizer from 1951 to 1970. Now Pfizer is a stock that actually ended up going up a hundred times. It was a hundred bagger, amazing company. Now, if you look at something like the share earnings, which is the EPS pretty much, it was 27 cents. It went to $1.28. It has been steadily rising. But in some years, like from 1966 to 1967, it actually declined in EPS. Maybe the analysts, they downgraded the stock. Maybe the stock sold off 20% in a day maybe everyone was hating on the stock maybe no one wanted to touch Pfizer anymore maybe they were saying Pfizer is dead these are kind of things you hear a lot and a lot of you give into your own emotions you forget why you bought the stock but the stock chart influences your behavior 
And this is why you sell these kind of stocks. And this is why the book actually says that most people don't experience 100 bagger is because they're not focusing on the fundamentals, but they focus on the stock chart and the news that are coming around a specific investment. And this is what he says in the book. He said, if you look at those EPS per share trends, would you have ever sold Pfizer? And the most likely answer that most of you are going to give me is no, I would not have sold Pfizer looking at this amazing EPS per share trends, the dividends and return on equity, book value. You would never have sold Pfizer. But if you were paying attention to the stock chart, it was all over the place, up 20%, down 30%, up 50%, upgrades from the analyst, downgrades, missing on earnings by a penny or two. People said the stock is done or they beat on earnings by a penny or two and people think it's the best thing ever. And it's all this drama that really prevents most of us from ever experiencing something like a hundred bagger. Why? Because we tend to sell early. Either we take profits early because the stock went up. This is something I'm guilty of. And again, why did we sell early? Because the stock went up, not because the value actually maybe improved. If the value improved, then we should not have sold the stock, even though the stock went up. Or maybe we sell at a loss. Why? Because the stock has gone down, even though the fundamentals are still intact. So this is an amazing book that actually gives you the mentality that you need to have if you ever want to experience 100 bagger it's mainly the mentality of sitting on your ass and doing nothing paying attention to the fundamentals not selling a stock because it's overvalued not selling a stock because it went down if the fundamentals are fine and almost importantly is not taking profits because the stock became a large percentage of your portfolio or because you know the stock went up 30 percent too quickly but instead of paying attention to the fundamentals, because most of the 100 bankers, they actually spend most of their times being very, very overvalued, even like Visa. If you looked at Visa all the time, it's been always pretty much overvalued. A lot of other stocks, Apple, a lot of times Microsoft, they just always look overvalued, but they keep growing into the overvaluation. And this is the big part about these 100 baggers or the stocks that return 100 to 1 in the stock market. And this is what I personally look for in my own strategy, in my own portfolio for me to find these potential 100 baggers within the micro cap stocks. Now, the most important thing with these micro caps is diversification for you to keep them a small percentage of the portfolio. This this is the whole barbell strategy that if you put something like I don't know half a percent or whatever is good for you something in a micro cap stock and this micro cap stock goes to zero as a percentage of your portfolio you don't actually lose much but if this stock ended up going a hundred times and it's just a small percentage then it's gonna be a massive position in your portfolio and this is the whole asymmetrical bet that if you you know, if you're whatever you're risking, you're not losing much, but at the same time, your upside is pretty much unlimited if this company ever works out. And something else he says in the book, he said that if you buy, you know, something like, let's say, an example, five micro cap stocks and four of them go to zero, but one of them only goes up a hundred times, then you're still going to make a lot of money. But there's a very low likelihood that four stocks out of five are going to go to zero, which is why it's an amazing risk reward payoff scenario. And I'm going to show you exactly the things that I look for is mainly four different things. The first thing that I mainly look for is I want a profitable micro cap. Most of you misunderstand the micro caps. You call them pink sheets. You call them a garbage, junk stocks. This is the reputation that they have. But not all of them are created equal. Not every single small company is a bad company. Not every illiquid company is a bad company. Just like not every mega cap company is a good company. Not all of them. There's a lot of mega caps I would never buy. It's just the way it is. So the size and the illiquidity does not give the perception of a good company or a bad company. But I personally want you know, a profitable company, maybe three or four quarters of profitability, or maybe even close to profitability. And the main reason I want that is because I want to minimize share dilution. This is the enemy of those 100 baggers, whatever the company has to go to the public markets and issue shares to raise money, even if they do something good with it. But most managers, they don't know how to do that. They always issue shares at the pretty much at 52 week lows. They issue shares at undervaluation instead of overvaluation. So I don't really like it at all. And I try to stick with only profitable micro cap stocks. The second thing that I look for, and it might seem obvious, is high earnings growth or even high 
revenue growth by itself over 20 percent most of you actually know why i look for such things this is an amazing graph it's a little bit blurry but it's still pretty good i found it on twitter and this is it says the years it takes for 100x at different growth rates and this is an example that if a company was able to grow its revenues for example 33 percent for the next 15 years every single year for 15 years you're gonna have 100x it just assuming that the net income margin stays the same everything stays the same if uh, if the revenue grows up 33 percent for 15 years you're gonna have 100x but if it goes up 18 percent for 30 years you're still gonna have 100x now a lot of you might be uh, confused and might tell me you will never find a stock that grows 33 percent for 15 years well this is actually very very possible i have a lot of companies in my own portfolio they're so small like 30 and 40 million market cap most hedge funds cannot even buy them which actually creates an opportunity but a lot of them are growing revenues 50 and 100 percent you know sometimes 120 percent i mean crazy stuff and these micro caps can do it they're so, so small so they can do a lot more than you actually believe a lot of them have very higher revenues and earnings growth rates and i personally look for 20 percent or more within uh, the micro caps the third thing that i look for which is very very important i want high insider ownership i prefer over 50 percent or 20 percent the main reason i want high insider ownership is because i want the company and the ceos to actually have skin in the game i want their incentives to align with my own incentive as a shareholder i don't want a ceo that's just working for a salary whenever he owns a piece of the company or especially the cfo the cfo and the ceo whenever they own a decent chunk of the company this is gonna give me more uh, margin of safety it's gonna give me more of a safety net that they're gonna likely do the right thing they're not gonna dilute shareholders because they themselves are gonna get diluted they're gonna try to do whatever it takes for their business to succeed which is why i always want high insider ownership most of the companies that i have have high insider ownership one stock has 45 percent one stock has 65 percent one another one has 18 percent and the other one is like 11 or 12 percent it's not much but i tend to look for over 15 percent insider ownership this would give me a large margin of safety and again it would tell me that whatever the ceo is doing is the most likely you know a scenario that i want to be doing if i was a ceo because we are both partners we both own the company and this is very very important if you're buying in a liquid or very tiny you know micro cap or even a nano cap kind of stock now the last one which is the most important one and most people they don't talk about this and this is mainly the ability to reinvest so if i have a company like a restaurant company i want them to be able to take the free cash flow reinvest it and maybe purchase new equipment which is gonna make help them make some kind of different food or f quicker food or if they can take maybe the free cash flow reinvest it and even build more restaurants and then take the free cash flow from the new restaurants reinvest it and build even more this is how i want to see i want to see some way where the company can reinvest the profits to be able to grow this is the big part of a lot of the hundred baggers even mcdonald and many others they just take the free cash flow and reinvest it and they have to have some way to be able to reinvest it with good capital allocators a lot of companies they just are serial acquirers so they just take the free cash flow acquire companies then they take the free cash flow and just keep snowballing it keep doing it again and again and again a lot of other companies they reinvest in themselves maybe they hire more staff which could help increase the revenue growth maybe they buy new equipment new materials you know they expand in a certain region but i want to see the ability for them to reinvest the free cash flow and if i can't see that then i'm not going to be interested in actually owning the company now i have to remind you again that you have to be very very patient whenever you're buying this micro cap it's not gonna you can't you can't watch it every you know five or ten minutes oh it went up one percent it went down ten percent you cannot do that you have to put it in some kind of a different portfolio and then leave it for five ten fifteen years to actually see what happens because if you keep monitoring it you're most likely gonna exit the position or you're gonna sell at a profit or sell at a loss this is something you have to keep as a gamble it could work out 
it would be amazing for your portfolio, but if it doesn't, you're actually not going to lose much. And if you're interested in knowing more about those companies, I have all the resource. I have everything included in my own investment group. It's, it's very affordable. You could join and check it out. But please don't join if you don't have a long-term horizon because I don't have time for people that are going to worry about a 5 or 10% gain or loss. They're going to you know, keep monitoring and asking 1,000 questions about a certain micro cap. This is something we research, we buy, and we hold it for the very long term, and only time is going to tell if this is actually going to be a successful investment or not. So if you don't have the patience, again, I don't think this strategy is for you, but uh, again, it wasn't financial advice, of course. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button, and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another one.